All right, and uh, let me share my screen. I think we're all getting used to this whole process, right? Okay, can everybody see that all right? Yeah, we can see it. All right, great. Okay, so uh, once again, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me tonight. Um, this is a uh, you know not exactly the way that we like doing these these tours and these open houses, but um, I guess it's the best we can do. So uh, instead of meeting you face to face, uh, it's very nice to meet you virtually, um, and uh, hopefully I can uh, give you some broad outlines of our program and how it operates. And then, uh, like I said before, um, I'll be available to answer any questions that you have. Um, so to start off with, uh, I just want to kind of broadly sketch out the way that the history program at Wilkes is structured and how it works and what we focus on. Um, and so I want to start with our faculty. Um, the, the faculty at the, in the Wilkes University History Department, um, we have uh, four full-time faculty um, and our Dean of our College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences is also a historian um, and occasionally teaches classes for us. Um, it's a relatively small group of faculty um, but the nice part about that is we're actually very close knit, very uh, tightly kind of connected with one another. We're all friendly um, and we work very well together, uh, both in terms of picking out courses that balance well together each semester um, and in kind of working as a unit to really help our students to uh, find the kind of pathway through history that uh, is most interesting to them and which will prepare them in the best way for their particular career goals. So just really quickly, um, the four of us full-time faculty members, we start with Dr. John Hepp. He's our senior historian, professor of history. He specializes in 19th and 20th century American and global urban history. Uh, he's also a trained lawyer. Um, so he does a lot of legal history and he, uh, as I'll get into in a little bit uh, later, uh, he is kind of in charge of our pre-law track as well. There's me, I'm an associate professor of history. I specialize in British and European economic and political history. I also focus on the global oil industry. So I teach about the Middle East and things like that as well. Uh, we have Dr. Akira Shimizu, who's an assistant professor of history. He's a specialist in Japanese and East Asian cultural history. Uh, he also likes to focus on film and, uh, and popular fiction and other uh, uh, aspects of popular culture um, in really unique ways. Um, Dr. Amy Subchak joseph is our other our uh, early Americanist. Uh, she specializes in women's history and print culture. And like I said, our Dean uh, Paul Riggs also specializes in British history um, and occasionally teaches for us. Now, the nice thing about the way our faculty set up is that you can see we have two people who specialize in American history and two people who specialize in non-American history uh, and then Dr. Riggs as well. Um, we all have different uh, areas of specialty, different chronological periods that we focus in, but even more importantly, we all kind of do different types of history. I do kind of the political and economic history. Dr. Shimizu does a lot of cultural history. Dr. Sapchak Joseph does material cultures and public history. And Dr. Hepp, as I already mentioned, does um, you know, focus on urban environments, um, legal history. So not only do you get different kind of geographical um, or different chronological periods in each of our classes, you also get a different approach to how people study history and do history. So even though we're relatively small, um, you actually get a wide range of historical approaches in our, our program. Now, regardless of um, who you work with, uh, we have several different concentrations or tracks that are part of our program. Um, one of the most popular is the uh, education track. We have a lot of majors, probably about a third of our majors, maybe sometimes even peaking at about a half of our majors. will do a uh, history and secondary ed double major. They want to be high school history teachers uh, in essence. Um, so we have an education track. Uh, that track, uh, you know, we have a lot of experience with it. The education department is literally one floor above us in our building that we're housed in. We work very closely with the education department um, to kind of coordinate classes and make sure that you follow uh, kind of the pattern that they want you to follow so that you can get your teaching experience and things like that, your student teaching and all of that as well. Um, we have a pre-law track, as I mentioned, Dr. Hep kind of spearheads that. 
We have a lot of people who end up focusing kind of on preparing for law school uh, through their history degree. Um, sometimes they'll either double major in poli sci or minor in political science. And in fact, um, this is very exciting. Uh, I just found out that we are in the process of creating an actual minor focused on legal studies. And so a lot of people who take that track would probably do a history major and a minor in legal studies to prepare for law school. Um, two of our newer tracks are public and digital history. These are uh, kind of burgeoning fields in historical study that are focused on bringing historical uh, research and educational tools and artifacts and artwork and all sorts of things to the public outside the classroom. So one of the most obvious examples of this is museum work, right? Working in a museum, but also working at historical sites, being a historical interpreter, uh, developing historically themed web uh, processes and web pages, uh, working in the archive, uh, taking you know, copious amounts of data that we have and all sorts of things and making it accessible to researchers. This is a, this is a field that is rapidly developing and actually really exciting. Um, and last but not least, we have a, a track that's focused on those people who want to go on and get either a master's or a PhD in history. And so we uh, kind of tailor a program for people who want to kind of take the academic uh, track, the, the graduate study track. Now, regardless of the track that you have, um, we have kind of a consistent ethos in the way that we uh, do um, our work with our history majors. Um, first and foremost, we want you to get an excellent education in history uh, to kind of develop those critical thinking skills, those tools of research and writing and things like that. They're kind of at the heart of, of a historical um, education. Um, and luckily for us, that actually tailors and dovetails nicely with preparing you for a whole range of different opportunities out there. Not everybody's going to end up being a high school history teacher. We, we understand that. And that's why we tailor our program to develop you as a thinker, as a writer, as a scholar, but also to develop all sorts of marketable skills for you so that you actually have a wide range of uh, skill sets that will prepare you for jobs in all sorts of fields. Um, and so here are some of the ways that we do that. Uh, we have a very strong advising program. And I'm going to go into these in a little more detail in a second. We focus on developing marketable skills. We work really hard to give you a lot of outside the classroom experiences. Now, obviously COVID has kind of messed that up a little bit, but even so we work really hard to get you out of the classroom, doing all sorts of things out in the community in other places, internships and things like that, talk about. We have a really strong community uh, that's part of our history program, both within the, the, the department with the, the faculty, but also amongst our majors. We have. At any given time, somewhere between 35 and 45 majors on average. So it's a relatively tight knit group. We're pretty small. And that's really great because that means that you get to know your fellow majors. You take a lot of classes together uh, and we develop a really strong community. Um, and last but not least, uh, and again, I want to get into this all a little bit more in a second. Um, we don't believe that our relationship with you ends when you graduate. When you walk across that stage, we don't like dust our hands off and say, okay, we're never gonna see that person again. We actually have uh, long-term relationships with a lot of our alumni. And that partnership uh, you know, for success continues even after you graduate. So really quickly, let me just kind of go through some of the ways that this plays out. Like I said, advising is really where this all starts. Uh, the four of us, uh, full-time faculty, we divide up our, our majors be between ourselves. And as I said, since we usually have 35 to 45 majors, each of us usually has around 10 advisees. And that's actually really ideal because that means we get to know you really, really well. A lot of other departments on our campus, not through any fault of their own, a lot of professors end up with 30 or even 40 advisees. And in that case, they sometimes don't even know the name of their advisees, never mind uh, you know, what interests they have and where they're from and what they wanna do. So the nice thing about having a small program like ours is we're gonna get to know you. We're gonna to get to know what you wanna do with your career. We, we're gonna to get to know your interests. What kind of history do you like? What kind of history do you not like? We're gonna to get to know all sorts of things and we can work with you very closely to tailor your experience and tailor your program to your interests and your goals. Um, now, on top of that, 
as I said, in each of our classes, we focus on not just having you learn dates and facts and stuff like that, but having you develop not only the critical thinking skills that are absolutely the bedrock of historical study and one of the most important skills that you could have, but all sorts of other marketable skills. Learning how to write really well, to communicate extremely well, uh, being able to present information, like a vast diverse array of information in ways that can be easily understood and easily digested. Uh, you know, working in archives, uh, being able to manage data, all of these things have actually helped our history majors get jobs in all sorts of different fields, ranging from, you know, high school history classroom, all the way to working for an aeronautical uh, and, you know, space company developing parts for airplanes and stuff like that. Things that, you know, you wouldn't think uh, off the bat, like, what can you do with a history major? You know, very few people would say that you'd be working in the aeronautical industry, but there you go, right? So these skills actually, you know, you can kind of do something that you love and something that's fun, studying history, while at the same time kind of honing all of these different abilities that are gonna make you a marketable candidate when you graduate uh, and when you're on the job market. Now, another huge part of that is, as I said, getting you outside the classroom. We focus very, very much on giving you experiences that are going to make your resume look amazing. Uh, one of the things that we really focus on in our program is doing original research. We want you to be able to do your own research, write and present at conferences, to travel uh, to different uh, you know, meetings of different historical conference groups and things like that. And we've had amazing ex experiences and amazing success with our students getting accepted to really prestigious conferences all over the United States. Here's just a couple examples. Uh, you know, New Orleans, San Antonio, um, we've been, you know, we, we participate in a lot of regional conferences. And this is really great experience for our students. It's scary sometimes get up in front of a group of people and, you know, present the paper that you worked on. But it's one of those things that goes on your resume and just looks great that you are somebody that's willing to get out there, willing to present stuff, willing to kind of put yourself on the line. Um, beyond that, we have a lot of uh, great partnerships for internships, both kind of regionally uh, in our local, our local area, but also further afield. Um, internships are a big part of what we do, uh, particularly if you do the public or digital history track. Um, here are just a few examples of really fantastic inter internships our students have gotten recently. Uh, we had a student do an internship at the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia. We had a student do an internship at the Smithsonian, Washington, DC. Uh, and, and other places. Um, one of the amazing kind of great opportunities that we have right here at Wilkes University is we actually have a really impressive archive that um, it's almost like something out of Indiana Jones. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest. Uh, it was an archive that was put together over decades and decades by this fantastically wonderful old historian who almost looks like he stepped out of a movie and nobody knew what was in there. And when he retired, we, a new archivist came in and we've been having students work in that archive, literally opening up boxes that we didn't know what's in there. And uh, these students have actually worked hand in glove with our archivist to, to make these resources accessible and available to researchers. We have documents from Napoleon Bonaparte and you know Emperor Charles V of the Holy Roman Empire, like just sitting in these boxes that we didn't even know we had. And so, we have opportunities, like I said, here in Wilkes-Barre, but also uh, farther afield. And uh, just have had some, some really wonderful success in getting people really great experiences. Um, you know, on a more kind of, you know, down to earth level too, uh, just the strong community that we have in our history department um, is really a huge benefit. Um, college is tough, right? Especially given the circumstances now with, you know, everything being topsy-turvy and everything and having a tight knit close program in which people work together and are helpful to each other, um, give advice, give support, uh, that can't be overstated. Um, I have to say personally, um, the faculty, we're all very friendly. Uh, we've heard that from a lot of people where people always joke that we're the friendliest department on campus. But even more than that, our students are extremely friendly. And I wish I could take credit for that. I think we just attract really nice people. 
Um, and so we don't have any formal kind of mentoring programs or anything like that. But very often it just happens where older history majors will kind of take younger history majors under their wing, give them advice, help them pick out classes, uh, help them find resources in the library and stuff like that. And that's something that's just intangible that, uh, you know, again, I wish that we could take credit for it. Um, but I, I think that that kind of environment just fosters uh, friendliness and brings in people who are attracted to that. So um, that's a really, really great uh, aspect of our program that uh, just exists. And I, I, can't, I can't claim credit for it. Um, now, last but not least, as I mentioned before too, um, we, uh, we work really hard with our graduates to ensure that they uh, find success in the careers that they, that they want. Um, uh, this has been probably one of the least expected parts when I took this job. Um, I didn't realize that this was gonna be such a rewarding part of the job. And that is that when people graduate from our program, they go from being my student to being my friend. And uh, I have a lot of recent students who have graduated who continue to you know, call me every once in a while, stop by and talk. And I've written a lot of recommendations for them, uh, worked with them on you know, resumes, on cover letters and things like that. And the results have been pretty, pretty amazing. We've had students end up getting really fantastic uh, teaching jobs at some of the best school districts in this region. Uh, we've had several students get into wonderful graduate programs, uh, including one student um, two years ago who got a fully funded master's degree at the University of Delaware, which is almost unheard of. That means that not only did she not have to pay for her master's degree, but they paid her uh, to do it. Um, we've had students go on and get jobs in the governor's office in, in Harrisburg, and we even had one student who got a very prestigious Fulbright uh, uh, scholarship and spent a year uh, doing research and working in Taiwan. Um, so this is just a couple examples of, of some of the amazing success that we've had with job placement and graduate school. Um, and so, you know, it's really one of the most fun and rewarding parts of our job is when we see you thriving and when we see you succeeding in the goals that, that you have. Um, and so I think all of that kind of combines uh, to make our program pretty unique when it comes to history programs. Um, a lot of history programs are really big, um, especially if you go to a big state school, and that offers a lot of advantages, right? I'm not going to deny that. But you're also going to be in a department where you may never have the same professor twice, or people might not who know who you are, or people might not be able to give you the individualized attention that we can. And so I think that together, you can actually have a tight-knit small community here at Wilkes, but not sacrifice any of those big opportunities. Uh, that you might think that you can only get at a Penn State or you know a SUNY school or something like that. So um, I'll, I'll kind of end there. Uh, if you want, uh, we do have a social media presence on Facebook and Instagram and on YouTube. Um, we don't uh, we don't inundate with tons and tons and tons of stuff. So if you do want to follow us on Instagram, History at Wilkes, it's not like we're gonna constantly be you know drowning your feed with, with things, but we do update that, especially if we have events um, or different programs or things like that, um, just some fun updates and things. So feel free to, to, to follow us if you would like, um, and you can get up to, up to the minute stuff there. Uh, you can also find our website, um, and you can, most importantly on our website, you can find contact information for all of us, the faculty. Um, and I can speak for my colleagues when I say that you are always welcome to reach out to us. Uh, if you want to send us an email or give us a phone call or something like that. Um, if the situation allows uh, in the coming months, we'll see if it changes. But if the situation allows, we also love to have people come and visit our classes. If you want to come in and sit in on one of our classes, um, you know, we would love to have you do that. Obviously, this uh, semester may be a little difficult to do that. But, um, you know, if, if it allows, feel free to, to do that as well. So um, here's my contact information, um, my email and my, my office phone number. Like I said, please, please, please don't hesitate to contact me uh, if you have any questions or anything like that. Um, so I'll stop the presentation there. Um, and I am happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, if there was anything that I skipped over too fast or 
if, uh, if you want to learn more about anything. And like I said before, feel free to just unmute and shout out a question or, or type it in. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so any questions from anybody? And it's okay if you don't too. <laughs> Okay, well, I know a lot of times what happens with this is, you know, we'll finish up the meeting and then an hour from now, I'd be like, oh, shoot, I wish I had asked him that. Uh, and that's exactly why I want you to feel free to, to shoot me an email um, or give me a phone call if, uh, if you'd like, because, you know, we, we love to answer questions. Uh, we love to kind of explain things about our program. So, you know, don't, don't be shy. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Um, like I said, me and all of my colleagues were very friendly people, so you don't have to be worried about it. Um, <clears throat> so, any any questions? <clears throat> no. Okay. Well, I want to thank you all very, very much. I know it's um, kind of weird to take a, a bit of time in the weeknight to do this, so I appreciate you taking the time and uh, and you know come to learn more about our program. And I really do hope to to, to talk to you some more in the future. And I. Really hope to see you in my classroom at some point in the near future. So, um, all right, last last call. Any questions? All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it, and um, I hope to talk to you again soon. All right. Have a good night.